In this video, I tried beating Terraria using swords only, but to make things more interesting, I installed a mod that allows each and every weapon inside my inventory to attack at the same time. Just how crazy will things become? Stay tuned to find out. Alright, let's get started. So because I already have a sword, I can start killing monsters immediately. But obviously, this weapon isn't going to cut it. There are many many options, but let's take this one step at a time. I'm allowed as many short swords, but that's not the case with broadswords. I'm only allowed to use one broadsword, however, if the broadsword is able to shoot out projectiles, then I can have and use as many as I want. Okay, enough chit chat, let's chop down some trees for wood. Okay, that should be enough wood for now. The first thing that I'm going to do is craft a workbench and immediately craft the wooden sword. So now if I attack with the wooden sword, it'll also use the copper short sword. And let's just check out what our attack looks like against this blue slime. Three, two, one. Yeah, already it's pretty good. But to take it a step further, I will be going underground to mine some ores to then craft the rest of the short swords. You know what? Before I do that, I just realized that there are some cacti here. So I can replace the wooden sword with the cactus sword. Because I'm pretty sure that has more damage. So the wooden sword has 8 melee damage and the cactus sword has 10. Yeah, let's do it. And yes, it still works with the copper short sword. Oh my god, that is a pyramid. Let's go see what's inside. I'm praying for either the flying carpet or the sandstorm in a bottle. Moment of truth. Oh, <gasps> yes, let's go. This is actually my most preferred one. And right off the bat, I've got some pretty good mobility now. I'm finding a lot of life crystals right off the bat, which is good. And there's some more down there too. And just like that, I already have 220 health. And that's enough amethyst for a hook. And here are some more life crystals. I swear I'm going to reach max health before I take out my first boss. And that is 300 health. No! I did not see that pressure plate. Oh, there's a gold chest here. Oh my god. Hermes boots and a gravitation potion. So I can get my hands on the Star Fury now. There's another gold chest here. Okay, okay. Magic mirror and the suspicious looking eye. Okay, I believe I have mined enough ores to craft all of these short swords. Got some tungsten, platinum, lead. But because I'm really close to reaching max health, I'm going to find the remaining life crystals. And after that, I'll return back home to craft the swords. I also want to see if I can collect enough demonite ores before I take on either the Eye of Cthulhu or the Eater of Worlds. Because when I do have enough, I can craft the Light Spain, which will give a high damage boost. And overall, it'll just help kill bosses a lot faster. Hopefully after collecting this, I should have enough. 34. Okay, just one more life crystal to go. Until max health. Ooh, sharpening station. I will take that. This is going to increase our damage by a bit more. And there is the last life crystal. Okay, let's head back home. And let's first clear out my inventory because it is completely full. Okay, inventory is cleaned out. First things first, let's make the amethyst hook. Then the lead short sword, tungsten short sword, platinum short sword. And luckily, I do have enough to make the light bane. So I can get rid of the cactus sword. Now because I did mine a bunch of tungsten, I can make the full tungsten armor set. Beautiful, 21 defense, and let's make the platinum pickaxe. Before I summon the Eye of Cthulhu, 
With the gravitation motion, I'm going to go up to some sky islands and search for some more accessories and the star fairy. Hopefully I can find it before it turns into morning. Okay, here's one. Come on. Okay, shiny red balloon. Lucky horseshoe. Yeah, I don't think I'll have enough time. Oh, baby. Oh, come on. Quick. And the star fairy. Okay, let's leave. And let's quickly summon the boss. And this is what my attack looks like. Go, go, go. Oh, you are getting shredded. Come down, please. Go, go, go. Faster, faster. Come on. Oh my. Oh wait. And the fallen star just fell on top of it. What? What is my luck? Everything up to now went absolutely perfect. I got everything that I wanted. Sandstorm in a bottle, Hermes boots, gravitation potion. Also max health. Now I do know I can kill the Eater of Worlds pretty easily. But before that, I'm going to make the Blade of Grass. So I'm going to need a bit more stingers, a bit more jungle spores, and three vines. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the Star Fury's projectile doesn't actually fall from the sky anymore. It shoots directly from my character. And because of it, it's a lot easier to aim. And the Traveling Merchant has arrived. I'm gonna have to check out his shop later on. Okay, that's enough jungle spores. That's enough vines. And that should be enough stingers. Okay, let's make the Blade of Grass. And now I should be able to shoot out leaf projectiles. Yep, right there. Let's take on the Eater of Worlds now. And I won't be building an arena for this one, considering how strong I was against the Eye of Cthulhu. And to be honest, I think I can just stand in one spot to kill the boss. Okay, here we go. Where are you coming from? Underneath? Okay. Oh my god, this is so satisfying. Okay, heal up. Yeah, I should be able to stand here all the way. I hope. Come on. Beautiful. I might as well do it one more time, just to make sure I do have enough materials to craft the full shadow armor, as well as the nightmare pickaxe. Oh, it's me close. No! I was too cocky. Well, I mean, I do have enough now. It's just that I won't be able to get the treasure bag. Oh my god, I forgot to check the traveling merchant. It's okay, I'm sure he'll show up again some other time. Let's craft the full shadow armor first. And then the nightmare pickaxe. Let's make some NPC houses. And because it's nighttime, I'm gonna go to the dungeon to take on Skeletron. Wait, the snow bomb just reminded me of something. I can actually get another weapon. And that is the ice blade. But I'll go find that weapon after I defeat Skeletron. And like the other two bosses, I won't need an arena, so let's just start it up. Three, two, one. Oh my god, that fallen star. That's two times now. Okay, gotta get rid of the hands first. Almost done. That's one down. Oh my god. And that's two. Okay. I'm kind of low on health. So let's not get too cocky here. Oh... Okay, that sound is very satisfying. A thousand more health.
Oh god. And Skeletron has been defeated. Now that I have access into the dungeon, I'm only looking for two things. One being the Cobalt Shield, and the second being the Muramasa. Oh, perfect. Right off the bat, got the Muramasa. And there's the Cobalt Shield. Okay, let's go find the Ice Blade now. Okay, here's an ice chest. There it is. Ooh, it has weak on it, but that's all right. Now, all that's left is to get my hands on the Volcano Sword, some Molten Armor, and then I'll be able to take on the Wall of Flesh. Okay, finally made it to hell. Let's see if I can find an Obsidian Skin Potion to help mine the Hellstone a lot easier. Oh wait, that's it right there. Oh my god. Okay, that should be enough Hellstone 383. Now I need to mine some Obsidian. Okay, that's enough. Oh my god, I'm so forgetful. I need to get the Hellforge. There we go. Okay, let's craft the full Molten Armor set. And that's going to give an insane boost to my melee damage. There we go. Set bonus, plus 10 extra melee damage. So that applies to all of my swords in my inventory. Then let's craft the Volcano. And the Molten Pickaxe. Alright, let's test out my weapons and damage against the Eye of Cthulhu. And then we're going to take on the Wall of Flesh. Here we go. Oh yeah. That is nice. Okay, but since I have the Volcano, Blade of Grass, Light Spain, and the Muramasa, I can turn them into the Knight's Edge. Come on, give me something good, godly. Okay, I'll take strong. The only projectile that I really lose out on is the Blade of Grass, but having the Knight's Edge is a lot better. Okay, made it to the end of the world. Let's drink my potions. And let's toss in the Guide Voodoo Doll. Three, two, one. And what's really good about the Knight's Edge is that it also acts as a barrier because of the wide attack range it has. So basically, none of the Hungries can actually get to me. And if I really position myself, I can hit two parts at the same time. Okay, almost done here. Oh, shoot. Oh, that was bad. That was real bad. Come on. And... Oh! I just killed it in time before I died. That was insanely close. What? Any sooner, I would have failed the entire thing. Okay, let's pick up our treasure bag. And hopefully I get something good out of it. Ooh, nothing. Okay. I was hoping for either the Breaker Blade or even the Warrior's Emblem. Now that I'm in hard mode, let's go to the Corruption and break some Demon Altars to spawn in the hard mode ores. Okay, we've got Cobalt, Mithril, and Adamantite. Okay, that should be enough Cobalt. On to Mithril. Okay, the Traveling Merchant has arrived again. Let's quickly check out what he's got. Oh, okay. DPS meter. That should be enough Mithril. Oh, maybe not. Am I missing just one? Oh, never mind. I'm good. Okay, all that's left is the Adamantite. And that's enough Adamantite. With the Adamantite bars, I'm going to make the full Adamantite armor set. And this is going to increase our defense from 14 
Wait, I think I have the, yeah, the broken armor debuff, but let's equip it anyways. So 14 all the way to 26. So if I didn't have this debuff, then it would be doubled. So that would be 52. And with the remaining adamantite bars, I'm going to craft the adamantite sword because I believe it's stronger than the knight's edge. All right. So since I have some hard mode armor now, I need some hard mode weapons. I do have the adamantite sword, which is good, but I think I'm gonna need a few more before I'm ready to take on the mechanical bosses. So I'm thinking of the frost brand and the beam sword. The frost brand is a lot easier to get because it drops from ice mimics, but the beam sword is a lot more rare. It can only be dropped from armored skeletons and it has a 0.67% drop rate. So yeah, that's less than 1%. So let's just go for the frost brand. Okay, here's an ice mimic. Please have the frost brand. Oh, <gasps> let's go. Now with this weapon, I can inflict the frostbite debuff, which deals 10 damage per tick. And the fire rate of the frost brand is a lot faster compared to the ice blade. Let's go up to some sky islands to kill some wyverns for the souls of flight so that I can make myself a pair of wings. Okay, that's enough souls of flight. And that's enough souls of light. Now I can craft angel wings. Unfortunately, it just turned into daytime, so I'm gonna have to wait until the next night to take on mechanical bosses. In the meantime, I have so many accessories that I want to combine. So I'm going to summon the goblin army manually, defeat them, and then find the goblin tinkerer. Okay, that's enough tattered cloths. Let's make the goblin battle standard and let's summon them right away. Okay, goblin army has been defeated. Let's go search for the tinkerer. Oh my god, there he is. Wait, that was so quick. Okay, let's purchase the rock boots and workshop. I'm also going to reforge some of my weapons. Superior, that's fine. Superior as well. Ooh, legendary. <gasps> no way did I just get the beam sword. And it has godly on it too. What is my luck? Okay, first things first, Spectre Boots. Then the Sandstorm in a Balloon. Turn it into the Yellow Horseshoe Balloon. Now I'll be able to equip the Warm Scarf. And let's do the Band of Regeneration. Now all that's left to do is wait until nighttime. Okay, it's finally nighttime. So the first mechanical boss that I'll be summoning is the Destroyer. Three, two, one. Run over to the clumped up part. Oh yeah, there we go. 3,000 damage per second at my peak. But then attacking it normally. About a thousand. Not too shabby. Less than 50% health now. Ten thousand more health. And you are finished. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Next up, the twins. Almost second phase for the Spasmatasm. There we go. Okay, Spasmatasm is done for. Just the Retinator now. Second phase. Oh my god. Oh, that was so much damage.
And the twins have been defeated. And lastly, Skeletron Prime. And there should be enough time in the night to defeat this boss. Okay, 50% health. And there we go. All three mechanical bosses have been defeated. Now having all three souls from the mechanical bosses, I can craft the True Knight's Edge. And then with the hollowed bars, the Excalibur, as well as the Pickaxe Axe. Then let's go ahead and reforge this weapon. Okay, I'll take Godly. But I won't reforge the Excalibur because once I get my hands on some Chlorophyte bars, I can turn it into the true Excalibur. Let's go into the jungle now to mine some Chlorophyte and to find the Plantera Bulb. Okay, there's the Plantera Bulb. So it looks like I'll be making the arena right here then. Okay, the arena is all complete. It's a bit smaller than usual, but it should be okay. I haven't mined enough Chlorophyte just yet, so I'm going to do that first before I fight Pantera. Okay, I should be good on Chlorophyte. I've mined 219. I'm not going to make the true Excalibur just yet, since it doesn't work if I use the true Knight's Edge. So I'll be crafting the Chlorophyte Claymore and Saber. Once I defeat Plantera and Golem, then I'll mine some more Chlorophyte to craft the true Excalibur, eventually turning it into the Terra Blade. Alright, let's go reforge these weapons. Demonic, I will take that. And... I'll take Superior. So now my attack looks like this. It's coming along. Okay, let's head back into the jungle and take on Plantera. Okay, let's begin. Three, two, one. Here we go. Oh, what is this damage? What? Wait, wait, wait. Oh my. That was 7,000 damage per second? Wait, how is that even possible? Surely it's not because of the Chlorphyte weapons, right? No, it has to be. Because I was definitely not doing that much damage before crafting these. Jesus! So there's only one weapon that I'm looking for inside this treasure bag, which is the Seedler. Let's see if it's inside. Three, two, one. There we go! Wait, I got a whole bunch of weapons, oh my god. But of course I won't be using them, so let's get rid of them. And just keep the Seedler. Alright, my weapons now attack like this. Let's go into the temple now to take on Golem. Okay, made it into the boss room. And it's a pretty decent size. Let's put down a campfire and a heart lantern. And let's just start it up. Three, two, one. Jesus! I... And shred oh, what the wait I wasn't even checking my damage per second look at that 10,000 I'm pretty sure that wasn't even the max number I hit let's see again oh I did see 12,000 oh my god can these two weapons really change my damage that much though? That's actually crazy. I might as well just use up the rest of the power cells. Oh, I saw 15,000. Oh, come on. Break 15,000. No. I was close though. Okay, that's it. Let's go back home. And then let's go back into the jungle to mine some more Chlorophyte bars to craft the true Excalibur. Okay, that should be enough. 
there we go the true excalibur then with the solar tablet fragments i'm gonna craft the solar tablet and summon the eclipse but seeing that daytime is almost over i'm gonna have to wait until the next day the reason why i'm summoning the eclipse is to combine the true knight's edge and true excalibur with the broken hero sword into the terror blade it's finally daytime so let's summon the eclipse Okay, first moth run. Oh my god, second one. Come on, broken hero sword. Perfect. Okay, let's quickly make the terror blade. Ooh, godly. But I think in the end, I'm gonna have to go for legendary. Damn, it costs 52 gold. Okay. Come on. Yes, okay, okay. I was scared I was going to lose all of my gold just like that. But I am extremely strong now. Alright, the solar eclipse has finally ended. Now I'll be getting my hands on a weapon that I don't usually get. It is called the Flying Dragon and it's dropped by Betsy. So, it's time to summon the Old One's army. Here we go. Come on, kill Betsy! There we go. Okay, that's all that matters. I failed the event, but I got the treasure bag. Okay, hopefully the flying dragon is in this treasure bag because I really do not want to do that again. It took so long. Okay, please. Three, two, one. Yes, let's go! And we got Betsy's wings. Wait, I just realized this weapon has 247 melee damage and it hasn't even been reforged yet. Let's try to get the best one, the legendary. Come on. This one's a lot cheaper though compared to the Terror Blade. Is it even possible to get legendary? Oh yes it is, okay. There we go. 284 melee damage now. My attacks look like this. And the best thing about this weapon is that it can go through blocks. Let's head over to the dungeon now to take on the lunatic cultist. Let's begin. Oh my god. That was 13,000 damage per second on one enemy. It was around 15,000 against Golem, but that's because that boss has three body parts that I can attack at the same time. But for the Lunatic Cultist, it's just a singular enemy. Next up, the Celestial Pillars. Stardust Pillar has been destroyed. Nebula Pillar is down. Vortex Pillar is down. One more to go. And that's the last pillar. Let's go get ready for Moonlord. Here we go. Middle eye first. Dodge the laser. And looks like I'm dealing about 2,000 damage average. It's not bad. But if I go into true melee. Oh yeah, way, way more damage. Oh god, that was a huge mistake by me. I have to heal up here. There we go. Okay, that's one hand down. Go over. Middle eye is done. Okay, just the core now.
20,000 more health. 10,000. One. Oh, don't go in that water. Oh, I almost died there. Oh. Thank God I had the Star Veil. Otherwise, I would have died. Okay, let's see what's inside this treasure bag. And no swords, unfortunately. I do want to get my hands on some post Moonlor weapons. So I will be fighting the boss again. And let's just make the Solar Flare Breastplate. There we go. Alright. Let's see if I can get any weapons this time. Moment of Truth. There we go. Oh. Oh my god. I just got the legendary Meow Mirror. That's one out of the two post Moonlight weapons. So, I might as well get the other. Let's do it one more time, hopefully. But with this, it should be a lot faster. Alright. Oh yeah, that's... Oh! 7,000 damage. All done. And there is the last weapon, the Star Wrath. Let's reforge this weapon. Godly. Mm, kind of want legendary, come on. I don't think it's possible to get legendary. Of course. Right when I say that, I get it. Okay, with these two weapons, I just have to fight Moonlord one more time. Oh yeah, 10,000 damage per second. Oh, ho, ho. Come on, kill it before- yep, there we go, middle eye's done. That hand is done. Teleport. Time for this hand. This is crazy. Okay, just the core now. Oh god. Teleport. Come on. Oh, that touched me. Come on. And there we have it. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, comment on what other mod or video ideas you want me to try out. And of course, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Peace.